Okay, can everyone see my screen? Do you have my talk up? Yep. Yes. Great. Okay, so um, thank you for that introduction, Joko. Very appropriate. Um, what we are attempting to do today is clarify something that really should have been clarified a few years back, um, and we now want to, to make a formal statement about this. And the topic is alert production in LSST operations year one. So just a quick outline of what I'm going to talk about today. I'll first start by just briefly showing you uh, what LSST alert production is. Most of you will know this, so it's just a very quick recap. I will then discuss what the options for alert production in operations year one are. I will then present the proposed baseline that, uh, that in the project we converged on quite recently, and then discuss any possible implications of changes to the commissioning schedule. Um, Okay, so just, just briefly to, to start, this is the alert generation pipeline, it's a schematic. Most of you will know this. Um, image different alerts, alert generation is based on image differencing. Image differencing takes as input a template and it takes an image. It does image differencing, it produces difference images and catalogs of difference image analysis sources. These then go through to source association, which produces um, more Difference images, uh, sources and objects, creates the difference image objects here. And then these get this information goes into the prompt products database, and it also gets used to package up the alerts, which get sent out to community brokers. And so the key point here is that alert generation is based on image differencing, and image differencing requires templates uh, as input. And this just shows you a quick schematic of the distribution mechanism. The alerts here are generated uh, from the information produced by the alert generation pipeline. They're put onto a message queue and sent out to both community brokers and to the LSST science platform, where uh, the LSST community can access them and do science with them. So before I continue, I'll just uh, highlight a few bits, pieces of nomenclature. This slide is really here as a reference for, for most people, but I'll just very quickly go through it. The prompt processing is defined as the processing of the nightly stream of raw images, which includes difference image analysis and alert production and the solar system processing. And it's this processing that generates what we call the prompt data products. Alert production is one component of prompt processing that processes and calibrates images, performs the difference image analysis, and identifies the sources and the objects, the difference image analysis, sources and objects. And it is this process that generates the alerts that get sent to the community brokers. Data release production, as I'm sure most of you know, is a reprocessing of all accumulated LSST images over a given period of time. This generates the data release data products, and this, these data products are, are what includes the template images that are used in the difference image analysis as part of alert production. A process visit image is a fully qualified LSST image uh, from a single visit. It is stored with the background already subtracted. And a template image uh, is a deep co-added single band image of the sky created so as to remove uh, transient and moving objects from the final image. A template, as opposed to just a simple uh, deep co-add, is used in difference image analysis. And the template needs to be deep enough such that the template noise only contribute a small amount of the noise to the final difference image. In addition, the contributing process visit images to the template are limited to a range of observing epochs that span a maximum of one year. So these are just some terms that we're going to use uh, through this talk. Does anyone have any questions on that before I move on? This uh, is uh, also just for reference. Uh, I've put in here some links to supporting documentation. Many of you are probably familiar with these already. Uh, there's the Science Pipeline's design document, LDM 151, the data products definition document, uh, LDM 612, which outlines the plans and policies for LSST alert distribution, and two tech notes that the DM Science team uh, have recently worked on, both led by Melissa Graham, have been the alerts key numbers and the options for alert production in year one. DM DMTN 107, sorry, is uh, is the document we're going to focus on a lot in this talk today. Uh, this um, outlines several options for how to do alert production in operations year one. And finally, just in gray here, there's a document that we're working on, LSE 459, uh, alert production in LSST operations year one. This document is in preparation and pending feedback from the science collaborations and the science advisory committee on the baseline proposal that I'm going to present to you today. Um, we recently had a meeting uh, within the project and came to a 
came to a proposal and, and uh, that's what we propose to write up in this document. Okay, so what's the problem with alert production? Sorry, uh, uh, yes. The document in uh, pending, yes, mm -hmm. in preparation pending feedback from the science collaborations. Um, do we have an organized structure to give you feedback? Are we uh, not about at this stage? No, this, this, okay. this presentation is the first step. Okay. So we converged. Uh, we converged on a proposal. This is our first. Um, step in presenting that proposal to you, and that's something I think we can discuss at the end of uh, end of this talk in the question session, if you like. Okay. Okay, so what's the problem? Alerts are a, production, a product of difference image analysis, and difference image analysis requires that templates exist. But templates are built during data release production and made available through LSST data releases. The current LSST data release scenario, this, uh, this is a link here to uh, a document called LS011, which describes uh, or is an attempt to describe the LSST data release scenario, currently envisages that data release one will be one year after the start of LSST operations. And the data release one will be based on only the first six months of data. So what this means is that prior to data release one, alert production cannot run at full scale nor full fidelity because we won't have the templates necessary to do the difference imaging. Um, I think probably a lot of people have always sort of subconsciously known this, but we've never really uh, made a statement about this, nor what we're going to do to enable uh, transient science with alerts in year one, given this situation. Leon, may I ask? Um... Isn't the sure. statement that it's really data release two because you need the full sky? Um, That's when correct. You're I'll come in the to that shortly. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. So um, that is a very good point, and I have a slide on that uh, a little bit later in the talk. Um, but even though in data release one, because it's only based on the first six months of data and we don't have the full sky, um, we will still be able to do um, alert production, full alert production with templates built through a data release uh, for what we have. Which is, is quite different from data relief from operations year one, where we don't have any uh, DRP produced templates. Okay, so what are the options then for alert production in operations year one? Uh, as I mentioned, the DM science team recently carried out a study that was led by Melissa Graham of five options for alert production in year one. This study uh, includes uh, the identification of what we call the DMSST preferred option to maximize the science return in operations year one. And this is reported in DMTN 107. A couple of weeks ago, representatives of the LSST project science team, the data management science team, and the LSST operations project reviewed the options presented in DMTN 107 at a meeting, and we converged on a proposed baseline for alerts in year one. So I'll just give you a bit of an overview of the options that we considered in DMTN 107. I'm not going to go into all the details of, um, of what's in that document, but the document is there for people to have a look at and reference. And if you have any further questions on it, feel free to contact your uh, um, science collaboration liaison to the project or even ask questions on the Data Management Science Team Slack channel. So Leanne, can you just clarify, yes. we do have data management liaisons to the science collaborations clearly are impacted. Were those representatives mm -hmm. at this meeting? Or, or was like the alert stream, was there a representative of alert stream and solar sister processing? Because those seem to be the two that are impacted heavily by this. Were they, are they in this discussion? I guess you didn't really mention who's in this meeting. Can you clarify um, a bit? So the data management, yeah. So the liaisons to the science collaborations are all part of the data management science team. And the data management science team produced this document and reviewed it and then met together with the PST and the um, operations representatives to review the options. So yes, the, the DM liaisons to the science committee, uh, science collaborations were. Okay, thanks. Does that, that answer helps. your question? That does, thank you. Okay, so the five options that we considered were, uh, one, do nothing, as in we don't have templates, therefore let's not do alert production in year one, let's wait until we have a data release production catalog and do, uh, do alert production. Uh, 
The next two were do catalog differencing or image image differencing. So that is take values and catalogs from precursor surveys and use those to difference against measured values from LSST images, or take, uh, take just two, two successive images taken of the same field and do image image differencing. Neither of those requires templates. Um, they will produce alerts, um, but these were not the options that, that we were very keen on. The two other options that we looked at were to use commissioning data templates and to use data uh, templates generated during LSST operations year one itself. Uh, both of these obviously use templates and both of them have to be built, uh, or, sorry, one of them, the commissioning data templates have to be built before operations year one and the, the LOI one data templates would be built during the first year of operations as we gather data. Uh, both of these will give us uh, some alerts in year one. These options were evaluated based on five criteria uh, that's listed, uh, whether there are any implications for the scope in terms of either software development, computational processing, or uh, full-time equivalents, uh, what the risks were to the observatory and the system, if any of these involve upscopes, th there could be a risk um, uh, to delivering the data products and whether LSST meets its science goals or not. Do they violate any of the official LSST requirements? Um, consistency in terms of is there any difference in the content or format of the alerts as compared to alerts that will be generated from operations year two and onwards? And, uh, so, and science implications, will time domain science be maximized in year one by selecting any of these options? Any questions on that? Well, uh, it seems that options four and five do not preclude each other, at, at least. In no, they do not. Maybe. Yeah. No, they do not. In fact, the two that I've highlighted in green are the two that are part of the proposal that we're going to put forward to you. No, but, so do uh, not, Michael, do option, option four may levy um, certain um, constraints and or requirements on the, the uh, commissioning effort, right? I mean, I, I guess the way it would be phrased is whatever data we can get during commissioning that might be useful rather than here's a requirement on commissioning that we must have before we start the survey. Those are sort of two different ways to phrase it. Indeed, but I think um, the, the, the latter is worth, worth, a, worth a conversation. Most certainly, but let's keep going so that we have some time left at the end for discussion of these slides today. Okay, so I'm just going to go into detail now on the preferred options for alert production in year one. For the other three, the do nothing, catalog differencing and image image differencing, if you want to understand in more detail why we excluded these, although I would hope that do nothing is obvious, um, please <laughs> have a look at DMTN 107 and uh, we'd be very happy to receive your feedback. So the preferred options for LSST alert production in year one involve uh, two, uh, two options here. One is to use the commissioning data templates. Um, so one is called commissioning data templates. And with this option, we build templates wherever possible from commissioning data before the start of operations year one. And we use those templates to generate alerts during year one. And I state wherever possible um, because we're not going to have templates for the whole sky or the whole area. And as Chuck has pointed out, commissioning also has, um, has a, a schedule it has to meet. Um, and the second one is using uh, templates that are built in operations year one itself. So the idea here is to build templates progressively, progressively sorry, from the data obtained during operations year one, say for example, on a monthly time scale, and then to use those templates to generate alerts during year one, either instead of or in addition to using commissioning data, plate data to build the templates. And so following uh, the five criteria that were outlined on the previous slide, you can see that for both the commissioning data templates and the year one data templates, there is some upscope here. So commissioning data templates has a minor, potentially minor expansion in scope. So for example, if we want to if we need to change anything in commissioning to build templates, this could involve a, a, an increase in scope. Um, we don't see any risks or requirements violations with this. Um, consistency, we regard this as being somewhat consistent with the rest of the survey data. The, the reason we mark it as being not fully consistent is because templates built from images obtained over a short time window 
and the fact that alerts cannot contain uh, a full 12 month history of, um, of matches to near, nearby objects will not be satisfied with these year one alerts. So there'll be some minor differences in what is in the alert packet. Um, and in terms of enabling science, this will enable some science, um, but it certainly won't cover the full sky. If we add in the year one data templates, this um, I would describe this as a moderate upscope. And to clarify here, this means that we don't have any new algorithmic scope that's added here, but there are implications in terms of um, the production processes, personnel, uh, and et cetera, which I will come to in, in a minute. Uh, we don't see any risks or requirement violations with uh, year one data templates. Again, these are classes somewhat consistent with alerts that you will get from the rest of the project for the same reasons as for the commissioning data templates. Obviously, any alerts built during operations year one will not contain the 12 month history or matches to nearby data release objects because we won't have a data release. And this uh, option we describe as enabling more science as opposed to just enabling some science for the commissioning data templates. Uh, and this is because if we include uh, operations year one data templates in, um, in the process, we're able to cover a larger area of the sky uh, and uh, hence produce a larger number of alerts. Leanne, uh, I have a yes. question. So is, uh, am I to understand that in this, um, you're thinking that the templates would have the same depth? And so these new images that are collected during year one would not contribute to generate deeper templates, would just uh, generate templates in areas of the sky where commissioning has not generated templates altogether, or would they also be included in stacks to get uh, better templates or deeper templates in areas that were covered by commissioning? Um, I think we could envisage either of those options, in fact. Can I take a stab at that, Leanne? Sure, go ahead, Eric. So I, I would say that um, I would say that the first priority would definitely be building new area uh, so that we can get subtractions over any area. The challenge with rapidly um, cycling templates, you know, rebuilding them on a short time scale is that it, um, you start contaminate, you get transient contamination from new transients and also all your baselines for variable stars change. Uh, this is already an issue every year at the data release. And so I think we want to see if we can strike the right balance between you know, getting useful depth from the templates that we build and, you know, just sort of thrashing so much that the data products are, are a challenging. So I, I don't think that it, it's a good question. I, I, I don't think there's a, a right answer, but we, I, I don't foresee us rebuilding many, many times in a specific area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for what it's worth, I think that, you know, although there are obviously advantages in getting better and better template that does complicate systematics, um, and so the bookkeeping would have to be uh, incredibly good f to enable studies of rates and things like that. Thank you. Any other questions on this slide? I'll move on. Okay, so a little bit more detail about these two options that we, we're proposing. Commissioning data templates. Um, so there are three, three points here. Uh, during the final science uh, verification phase, templates will be made for uh, 1,600 square degrees as part of Mini Survey 1, and this will cover something like 10% of the wide fast deep survey. So these templates can be used in LOI 1 and would enable alerts to be produced across that area. And this in itself constitutes no expansion of scope for the project. In addition to that, we can, uh, we can say, well, why just use the templates from the commissioning science verification? Why not use all the templates built from commissioning data? This could potentially add an extra 300 square degrees from the uh, science validation survey 2 and uh, 100 square degrees from the 20 year depth test. Plus, we could also add into this any or all images obtained from the rest of commissioning. Uh, in Melissa's tech note, she estimates that building these templates um, will give us uh, greater than 14% coverage of the wide fast deep area and thus enabling more alerts to be produced and constitute only a small expansion of scope for the project. And uh, thirdly, um, a proposal, and this is an additional uh, proposal uh, that would go into commissioning, is that we can prioritize building single filter templates during commissioning. So 
Uh, one possibility listed here is to dedicate four good quality non-consecutive nights to obtaining uh, approximately three visits per field in a single filter over a contiguous uh, area. And this could give us up to 50% coverage of the wide class deep in, uh, in any single filter. In addition to, or uh, rather in place of, we could design what we're calling a template building observing program that the commissioning team can run whenever their activities are agnostic to filter and pointing. And this could also likely achieve the, the goal that is outlined in, in uh, Any questions on this before I move on? I have a, I guess it's maybe more an assessment uh, question for you. Given the way things are going, typically with commissioning, things will come up that are not expected. And so mm -hmm. is it really realistic to even think about using any bit of commissioning? Because if something comes up that needs to be tested with the camera, there's gonna be no, you know, the contingency is gonna be gone. So is it, mm -hmm. you know, is the way things are going, is it really expected you're gonna have time to be able to do any any really building of templates during commissioning? My my guess would be that would be the first thing I would cut if I, I was having, you know, if I had to eat into contingency and to get LSST on time for operations. So, you know, how likely is mm -hmm. it that there will be time for templates if we look at the current LSST schedule and how, how okay. on time the dome is right now. Right. So, hey, Leanne, um, can, I, can I chime in on that one? Go, go ahead, Chuck. Yeah, so on that score, um, I think you know, your, your assessment is correct that there, there will be uh, continued pressure on the commissioning effort. But that said, um, you know, uh, what we've presented um, over the, the years is a, is a highly structured commissioning plan but in reality, what's going to happen, right, is that there will be times when um, things are working well, and we can, if, if there is some priority to producing templates, we can say, you know, the commissioning team can say, okay, things are working well enough, stop tinkering with things, and let's take a block of data. That would then be, um, useful for producing um, the templates um, that would enable at least a limited amount of alerts in the first year. Um, you know, I'm, I'm still holding fast to um, having dedicated on-sky observing time, um, even after the technical integration parts. Yes, the dome schedule is, is um, challenging at the moment, but I think, um, we still we still have room to uh, execute on a rather robust commissioning effort. So I'm not, I'm not ready to give up yet. If that helps, <laughs> right? And yeah, hi. Uh, this is Peregrine. Uh, so in regards to three A, um, what is the thinking behind specification of making that uh, extra galactic in scope and not including galactic regions? Melissa? We don't know you... yet. That optimization yeah. will come later. We don't have enough information right now about details of the commissioning process, how long it will last, what will be priorities. We will definitely consult with collaborations to see what is the optimal placement on the sky. But at this point in time, it would be futile exercise because we don't have enough input. Sorry, Perhaps in a was... year, year and a half from now. But uh, um, Joko, let me mine. let me just address the, uh, the the earlier question. I just want to remind the science chairs here that keep in mind that um, if if we think about doing templates for a single filter, um, one night's worth of observing. If we if we had things working well, one night's worth of observing is 800 visits. That's a lot of sky, and so I think the point here is in 3A is that you know, if, if we declared a point in time during commissioning that we had four good nights, then we said, okay, we're just going to acquire imagery to uh, perform uh, templates for a single filter. It's a, it's a lot of area coverage. 
So I'm, I'm, um, I remain optimistic that we will get something useful out of commissioning to enable um, first year alert production. Um, Melissa, did you want to add something to this? Yes, I wanted to answer Irene's question directly. The reason why I propose that this um, cover extra galactic fields instead of galactic is because I think a lot of transient science can be done from the direct images for stars and from the um, prompt catalogs, like from the prompt, um, yeah, from the, uh, from the direct images. So if you, it's the extra galactic fields. For it. What? Cat the prompt catalogs aren't, aren't released. Right, um, but you can still, like users could still go to the images and there could still be sort of, you can use direct image information for stars to get light curves. It's for the extra galactic fields that you have to have templates so that you subtract the host galaxy in order to find things. So that was, that's the science motivation for prioritizing templates in extra galactic fields. It wasn't really meant to exclude galactic fields at all. Just the difference is you can do transient science more easily from direct images in the, um, for galactic fields. Am I making sense? I would like to follow that up actually, Melissa. I, I understand your thinking, um, but in terms of when it comes to doing the difference imaging in the galactic plane, uh, we're gonna have a very different set of false positives from the extra galactic fields. And yes, our, our requirements on the difference image analysis pipeline are going to be different. So I would argue that there is a lot of value in doing generating those templates at least some of the time during commissioning so that we get some experience with dealing with that early as possible. I agree with that, Rick. Yeah. So I definitely well, wasn't proposing that the galactic fields be like ignored in terms of I'm template sure. building. Um, so <laughs> we'll make, a make sure they don't. Can I make a suggestion on this? This is this is very interesting, but it's sort of getting into how we would choose what fields we would observe mm. if we are able to dedicate uh, one, four, or possibly more nights to, to dedicated template building. And I think this is something that we can engage the science collaborations in at, at a later date when we when we are in commissioning our. That's great. Fair enough. Uh, yes, we can probably start a community discussion on this yeah. um, among ourselves even as early as now and expect to mm -hmm. get to link this to project requirements and project scoping at a later day. I'll put that on yeah. an action on as an action to myself. I think that would be a really good thing to do for the community just to, to think about. You know, if we are able to have temperate, template building campaigns during commissioning, what do you want us to serve? And in fact, I have a slide at the end of this talk uh, specifically about this. We could perhaps. Uh, talk a bit more about it there. One thing I'll just add to this is that um, we're talking about having dedicated template building uh, campaigns here, but one of the proposals here is that is that um, uh, we don't, is that whenever commissioning activities are agnostic about filter or pointing, we give them guidance as to what filter we would like them to use or where they would point so that we can prioritize building templates. And it need not be a uh, uh, an added scope. It's just that they're still going to do that work anyway, but we just optimize it for building templates. Um, also, to come back to something that Meg said um, about building the templates themselves, Chuck's team and the commissioning team will be taking these images, but the pre-operations team will be producing data previews from the images that are taken in commissioning. And even if the commissioning schedule changes or is cut, the production of these data previews is still going to go ahead. So with whatever data is taken during commissioning, we will be building some templates through the data preview process in pre-operations. Okay, so I'll move on now to um, the, the next option of the two, uh, which is to build incremental templates during operations year one. There's agreement uh, within uh, the project that this is a good idea, but we need to do a technical study of the implications of running incremental template productions in parallel with uh, data release one production for up to six months during the first year of operations. Um, we note that there is no new algorithmic scope implied by this option. However, what we do need to do is consider the technical implications for I.O., uh, processing provenance of alerts, which will have a constantly changing baseline, say, for example, a monthly base, baseline, 
as well as issues of operational and, and staffing um, concerns. So, uh, yeah, so, so we like this idea, but we have to understand what the full implications are for this. But, Leanne, can I bring up what mm -hmm. I will see happen if you don't do this? MOPs can't run <laughs> without subtraction. And what will happen is if we are not getting, if the community is not getting solar system objects, they're going to start writing their own moving object pipelines. And this is going to fear the community. And so my worry is, is that if, if commissioning gets cut, even if you give me 50% of the sky, no one's going to want to wait to miss the next interstellar object or interstellar comet yeah. because LSST wasn't making templates. And so my worry is, is you are setting up the community to now rush to write their own algorithms when MOPS is being developed and will do a much better job because it can't do its job because it doesn't have templates. And so if it's one more FT, if it's one more person that a project or operations needs to get this going, I would find a way to get it. Because I think that competition with the community is going to be a huge problem because no one's going to wait for you guys to make templates. Sure. Now I understand that. That's a very and good I, point, Meg. And I also think um, is, how, like, how do we justify to NSF and DOE that LSST missed the interstellar comet that ZTF found because you weren't making yes. templates? And I, I don't know how to sell that to my community. Because they so, so have a question on this. The worry they've had. Have, so, so how is the community going to do better than LSST um, without templates? Are they are they going to produce their own templates? They're going to search it through a, a source extractor. So there have been people that before Mary Urge took over for solar system data products, there were people worried that you'd get into a panzer situation where you're promised everything's going to work, pipeline's going to start generating objects. And then lo and behold, they got to commissioning and there were issues and the pipeline couldn't work because of the way everything was. And so people on like last minute had to start writing their own pipelines. And there has been this fear that LSST will turn into that. And so Mario's done an incredible job of sort of quelling that and being like, here's what I'm doing for MOPS. But if MOPS can't run because there's no moving object pipeline, no one's gonna wait. They'll just start running source yeah. extractor. And now we have 15 or 40 other groups and me included, We'll start searching for things, and then LSST is not going to get credit. It's going to be coming around from people submitting things. And I think that's really not the situation you want to get into. And telling people, oh, you can have 50% of the sky is not really use is not really selling it. So I'm really curious how it takes only four days to cover the whole sky. Why not just build that into year one? Yeah. So I mean, make I No, it doesn't take. No, let's 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 not uh, be too optimistic. It does not take four nights to cover the whole sky. Yeah. Formally, we can cover 10,000 square degrees per night, but if you are going to do pairs of exposures, that's only 5,000 square degrees. That's assuming that right from the start, the system is at 100% efficiency and that we can really run and process on average 10 hours per night of data. That is also only one visit and we need between three and five visits for making templates. And then we have six bent passes. And lastly, even with original baseline for the commissioning, we were going to finish com construction phase after commissioning with only about 2000 square degrees of coverage. We were never going to have the full sky on day one of operations. So we are not subtracting anything from promises. We are just clarifying what was already implied in our baseline, but never properly communicated to our stakeholders. But you now we'll argue. probably end up with less than 2000 square degrees after, co after construction. So now there is possibility that some good postdoc will start downloading images and doing image to image subtraction and finding interstellar comments. Well, based on pan stars, you would expect maybe one or two will be missed during one year of LSSD operations. Is someone going to be so capable that they will download petabytes of, of LSSD images and develop pipeline and do everything to get there? Maybe yes, maybe no. But it's more, I think, this whole process is more than one person, one FTE, and we are really, really pushed against the wall now with our contingency. And there are many other things that would be on the list for some hypothetical additional FTE. So we need to be cognizant of all the other difficulties that are here. It's not like we are 
we have resources, but we are lazy, we don't care, we don't want to do it. There are many other things we need to prioritize. So we all want to get the best science. And indeed, NSF is pushing now hard on us to describe to them all the early science we will do with the first six months of data. They want us to predict what we will discover. So it would be nice to have interstellar object for the first month of LSST data, but we need to be realistic. So I hope that with, this is not the last time we talk about it. We will talk much more about these issues. We would like to take input and we would like collaborations to help us, but everybody needs to understand it is not just what is great science. There is also cost and schedule and we are running out of both. So can I, I, I heard a few things about one band pass versus six band passes. And so it seems to me like this is a science optimization problem. And so one of the things that we should discuss in our community conversations is whether it's better to cover a larger portion of the sky in fewer bands or to cover a smaller portion of the sky in more bands. That seems like a fairly trivial, but science-driven balance. That may not be the same for all sciences, of course. That's, um, that's a good idea, Fed. It's in fact a suggestion I have in about three slides. <laughs> for the science collaborations to take that on. In fact, exactly that question. <laughs> I promise, okay, I, didn't um, I didn't have the time to review the slides. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move on. Um, so a summary, this is a summary here of what we call the LSST preferred option to, is um, uh, for alert production in year one. So to maximize science by providing consistent alerts and also minimizing scope expansion, avoiding risk and meeting requirements. The preferred option is to use template images to run difference analysis in difference image analysis in year one. We don't want to do nothing. We want to do everything we can with the data that we have. And so this option has four potential components, which, which will escalate from a scope expansion of, of none um, to, to, to minimal, and they have a cumulative effect on the alert production. So using templates already built for commissioning purposes, this has no scope expansion, and we estimate we can cover 10% of the wide fast deep with just this. Then if we add in building templates from the rest of commissioning data, this gets us up to 14% uh, or so. Uh, should we then think of these as yep. over six filters, these numbers, all six filters? Uh, no. No. Okay, sorry to interrupt. Sorry, no, that's um, no, that's okay. Um, no, this wouldn't cover all six filters. Um, then if we add in uh, commissioning templates that have been optimized for single filter wide area coverage, we can get up to 50%. And this, this involves a moderate upscope during commissioning because we then have to start, to start um, targeting the, the commissioning activities. And then if we continue to build templates for new areas during uh, operations year one with this incremental <laughs> template building program, this can get us up to 50 to 100%. And uh, a point that's just noted here, and this comes back to the point Meg just made before, is that if commissioning is shortened, then building templates, incremental templates during operations year one becomes more essential for alert production in year one. So um, I'll move on now. I have two slides here that um, propose the baseline for alert production in year one co concretely. The first point is that the nominal full volume, full fidelity alert production in accordance with the science requirements documents will only begin in operations year two, following the release of templates in data release one. Prior to the start of operations, uh, template images can be generated from as much commissioning data as is possible for use in difference image analysis and alert production during operations year one. It's important to point out that alert production in operations year one will be neither full volume nor full fidelity. Um, and uh, to add into this, uh, if we add a template filler observation schedule and commissioning whenever the activities are agnostic to filter or pointing, we can um, increase the number of alerts that we can provide during operations year one. Sorry, As I, just mentioned, I, have a, sorry? I have a question about that. So a template filler observation, why, why wouldn't the images that are taken as science images not be themselves usable as template? Why would you need to add that to the scheduler? They, they are. Unless you're, we, what we're seeing, 
What we're saying is that if we want to cover as wide an area as possible in at least one filter, we would, um, we would, we would um, that's what we're saying. We would um, change the commissioning activities such that when they don't care what filter they're using or where they're pointing, we would say, right, we want you to use this filter and we want you to point here to maximize the number of unique alerts we can provide in Operation Zero One. So it's about it's about optimizing the commissioning activities to maximize the number of alerts in operations year one. So is there any particular reason you can't as you adjust this for post commissioning? Any particular reason why? I mean, because I feel like cadence decision goes into this. So it, it's which I, I'm a little surprised this wasn't brought up initially with the cadence white papers. Is there any particular reason if, if you're using this during commissioning that the scheduler couldn't go, oh, okay, well, I've already observed everywhere where there's templates. Now I'm going to go start observing where there isn't instead of going back to those areas. You know, I've already done the science. This part of the sky doesn't have templates. I'm going to go start imaging there. Is there any reason why that during can't commissioning be? You mean or post, no, beyond post commissioning. commissioning. Why? Doing your no, work. Yes. I think this brings up a, 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 a conversation mm -hmm. that probably is. Um, needs more depth and length than what we have available for us today. And that's the conversation about actually what does year one observing mm -hmm. actually look like and whether it looks like steady state survey observing, right? In this context, right? Year one may not be um, uh, the, the planned steady state um, scheduler driven survey that we want, want to have to enable some of these um, early science uh, objectives. I think that's right, really the short important. answer is yes. Meg, yes, we will have the ability to modify the strategy that Schedule is undertaking and in all likelihood we will do so. So then how does cadence decision fall into this? Because right now when people talk about cadence, none of this is inputted into that 10 year plan. So will the Rio, right. are, does that mean sort of the whatever I forget the name of the committee that will decide cadence this will be pulled into that decision or is project and operations going to tell that committee what year one is because I think there's I, I think at least on the no, solar we, system committee, do we don't and... we don't really know what year one looks like and it was sort of assumed that that cadence committee was deciding what year one was going to look like but it sounds like this may be it more is of a deciding the year one of the steady state survey so we have to do things in order. First, we have to finish the process that we are undertaking now. We will put these problems on the back burner. We will decide what would we do the first year of steady state surveying to see what are the desires from the community. Then when Chuck comes back and tells us, oopsie, I cannot deliver everything I said. Now we need to do something else in first year of operations. Then we'll push out in time that steady state survey, and then we'll re-optimize the first year with constraints from this discussion, and make it, there may be other discussions that we need to fold in. Fortunately, the new algorithm in the scheduler is now much more flexible, and I believe we could do something like this with the team we have on a time scale of a few months. As soon as we agree what are the priorities, then we can re-optimize the scheduler to get templates in one band or many bands. My view is that we should put science as a secondary priority during that be before DR1 observing, and we should put effort in optimizing everything we would do with alerts, including brokers and filtering and finding false positives, because I think the priority should be that once we get the full stream and full fidelity, hopefully, after DR1, we are all ready to fully utilize that stream, which means we need to get coverage of galactic plane and extra galactic fields because false positives will be different. I don't think we can just maximize one filter because systematics and false positives will depend on band pass, so we must have six band coverage. So it would be more important to fully characterize false positives rather than increase science outcome by factor of two by increasing area by factor of two in one band and so on and so forth. We will have all these discussions with science collaborations that care about it, but we can't squeeze everything in today. But 
once we understand better what will happen during the last year of construction, we will have proper discussion and studies involving science collaborations. I think it's worth pointing out that it, there are other reasons for obtaining this kind of data during commissioning. It's not just um, alerts. Uh, this is deep data from LSST that can serve a lot of purposes in terms of the science validation and performance validation. It's another reason exactly. why we want to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so should we move on? We only get 10 minutes left. Okay, so in a, the next point in the proposed baseline is that we will carry out a technical evaluation of the moderate upscope option to build incremental interim uh, templates during operations year one as new <coughs> is required. Um, and so this will increase uh, uh, dramatically, I think, our ability to provide alerts during operations year one and can also provide a, a ramp up to operations year two as we successfully cover more of the sky. This is something that I think will be important for community brokers to scale up to the full, full stream um, yeah. LCC alerts. And finally, I just add a note, and this is in fact what Michael uh, mentioned early, uh, early on, uh, is that as DR1 is only based on six months of data, it will likely not have full fidelity templates covering the whole sky. It's therefore possible that we will still not fully meet our performance goals for alerts until data release two's templates are available for use in alert production. Is, I mean, possible is a, is a weaker word. It sounds sounds more probable that we won't be able to do yes. so. Yes. And, and, and we should. So, yeah. I, I don't think that's anything to be ashamed of, but we should we should be direct about that. Clear. Yeah. yeah. That's a good point. Okay, I think we've discussed quite a few of these issues already. I have a slide here on the effect mm -hmm. of possible changes to commissioning. Um, so as we've already discussed, uh, and Joko's mentioned, so as Chuck, there's, uh, there's considerable pressure now on commissioning time uh, due to uh, progress with the dome and the, the telescope mount assembly. It is possible that commissioning time will be reduced and this will have implications for commissioning data templates, i.e. the area of the sky that we can uh, cover in templates during commissioning, and hence it will have an effect on the alerts that we deliver in operations. Um, as I mentioned before, that all the commissioning data from LSST CAM will be processed and released as part of data preview two to the community, and the data preview timeline will not change. So alerts will still be emitted in operations year one, just at a lower volume, if we do have a considerable, a considerable reduction in commissioning time. And uh, again, just to note that uh, as changes to commissioning are made, we will update the estimates for uh, alert production and operations year one based on commissioning templates. Okay, and so finally, this is my final slide. Uh, and this is a set of open questions here to the science collaboration, some of which we've already covered and discussed. Um, if, science, if commissioning time for science validation surveys were reduced from the current five months, how would you want us to spend the time? Would you want us to focus on building templates for as much of the sky as possible uh, at the expense of, uh, sorry, to better enable alerts in year one at the expense of, say, doing other validation activities that, that uh, were just alluded to? Um, which is the optimal filter if we focus on building wide area single filter templates? Or would the science collaborations prefer a smaller area with two filters, uh, for example? Or are, and are there any further optimizations that you would want us to consider? And uh, if we, uh, given that we can't observe the whole sky, for which locations on the sky would you want us to build templates? These are just some of the questions that we thought of. Um, perhaps you've got other points as, as well to add to this. And so at this point, I'll open the floor to discussion around these or any other points. So I'll take prerogative as, well, I'm not sure I'm chairing this call, but I'll, I'll ask a question. Uh, so option two, going ways back, which was not using LSST images, but using images from different telescopes and different surveys as mm -hmm. templates. Um, I don't see why that will be exclusive. I can see why those could also be integrated in areas of the sky where the LSST images are not available. And I'm wondering if it would be a possible in-kind contribution to develop a pipeline that is compatible with the LSST pipeline to, um, to do template subtraction and generate um, 
alerts that are consistent with the LSSD alerts, maybe even without being the official alert stream, in the areas of the sky where LSSD doesn't have templates from, say, Deccan images. Eric can correct me, but I think technically that would be a can of worms if you want to subtract, for example, Deccan images from LSSD images. Mm -hmm. One thing that could work is to do it at the catalog level. We have catalog from LSSD for a given visit, and then, for example, for all point sources, we ask if they change brightness compared to what PANSTARS or DECAM or HSC measured. But again, that would give you a little bit of science, but it would not help you at all with quantifying the behavior of false positives and other details that we need to figure out prior to DR1, so that after DR1, when we get the full stream from LSST, we are ready to use it efficiently. For example, one can devise many problems in your head that would prevent us to fully explore the alert stream after DR1, and that we lose half of the science, half of alerts, because we are inefficient, we have to cut at brighter signal to noise because we have false positives and whatnot. And so if you lose half of your alerts during year two, that's almost as much as all the alerts if you had them during year one. So it's not about quantity, I think, prior to DR1. It's about quality, it's about understanding what we will be producing after DR1. I think that's what should be emphasis for time prior to DR1. We must be right. ready to fully utilize the big stream. And I understand that from the point of view of project, but um, if this uses resources that are not project, and for example, in kind contributions, uh, couldn't that be a compromise that would prevent what Meg was suggesting, which is that the community would do that anyways, and will make science discoveries that are disjoined from the LSST science discoveries? Whereas if this is included as an in-kind contribution, it's effectively a no cost for the project team. And I, and I realize that that may be the bottleneck, that in fact, there might be a necessary involvement of the project team in this, in a project like this. Right, ideally, if someone could provide expertise and resources, couple of good postdocs, then ideally we would embed them into alert production team, and then they would work with these people on this additional app scope Mm -hmm. that is not funded by project resources, construction resources, but by external resources. I think that would be the best use of resources. Okay. Uh, this is John Gizes. I guess I don't quite understand then what's being discussed though in terms of the community going off. What will be available to people before DR1 to the degree that alerts can't yet be generated how is anyone going to go through the LSST raw data and generate their own alerts? I don't sort of understand what what's being discussed by Meg. Sorry, I mean, I, the, the release data products are the images and any alerts that exist. And so, um, you know, the science platform will be standing up and users will be able to pull images yeah, either to their own computing or run on the science platform, but I don't, not obvious to me that there is a scale sufficient uh, on LSST project resources to process everything um, with, certainly without, not without a special agreement. Mm -hmm. uh, although this is Peregrine, uh, although in the scenario where we're generating uh, templates as we go, during operations year one, um, that would allow uh, production of, uh, of alerts. Yes. Uh, as we build up a yes. library of templates. So that would yes. partially mitigate John's concern. I mean, I guess, I guess what I, I guess what I'm envisioning, I guess is to me the key questions and I probably are collaborators not so sensitive to that. I mean, does the failure to be able to follow up, you know, 10% of the supernovae in real time with other instruments, you know, or, you know, asteroid discoveries and, and things like that, is that 
is that compromising some of the major goals of, of LSST, you know, I mean, or, or is it the fact that since you can go back in time and eventually you'll, you'll get all the transients and you'll have all the LSST photometry for them, is it just a matter of a delay? I mean, obviously some science misses, but do the really like key goals uh, of the survey, are they going to suffer for that? And so I think for the Milky Way science, I don't think, I think the answer is probably no. So uh, that's just my guess. Uh, I have to run, so I will let you all think about that because it's someone else's problem. <laughs> we all have to, I'll also have to drop off. I have another telecom. Leanne, so, thank so you very much think, for putting yes. the slides together. Thank you. I mean, I don't expect answers to all these questions today, but Fed alluded to earlier in the talk, uh, a process by which the science collaborations could give input on this. Yes, it already exists. I created the community page and I can uh, put the link here. <laughs> uh, ta -da, ta -da. Maybe can I, can I also make a suggestion to make a f more formal request? Not most yes. people I know don't really know about community and anyone can post there. And I feel like given that this is such a huge thing, feels like given that the fact the project made us go through all these hoop for cadence, uh, cadence optimization, and then for this, it's like, oh, just write a community post. I feel like just thinking about no, something no, more no, formal hold on. is just something maybe mm -hmm. to think about. I, just given hold the on, the community, the community board will be the beginning of the discussion between the science collaboration. I would expect that when mm -hmm. time is ripe, as the as Liane and Jaco indicated, it will be early to receive that input from the science collaborations right now for the project, but that time will come soon. And so the community is an environment where we, the science collaboration, can have the discussion among ourselves of pros and cons for each science case and be ready to answer with a more formal and official answer once um, the project is able to embrace this. And as for the, uh, and, and as for your, uh, the reach of community, do you mean outside of the science collaborations or Most of the science collaborations don't even know how to use it, don't even look at it. Um, but, but also it's, I just mean, that, that I would put on the chairs because, uh, I mean, they, it is they, not a particularly hard tool to use. And so if you know that people are prepared and will be valuable in this discussion, it's just a matter of telling them this is, it's, it's a text-based board. I agree with that, Fed, but the difference is, is it doesn't look official. It looks like a chat. And so if you're asking for formal feedback, mm, and see. also I think it impacts other people's science cases. And so cadence decisions were not just science collaboration members. They were open to anybody. I, I would just suggest project considering if you did that for that, given that this has implications, you may want to do something like that. That's me. Even if it's asking for just a paragraph that it, community looks more informal because anyone can chime in, right? But it's also not clear who's especially project and how that feedback gets used. So just something, just something mm -hmm. the feedback I've gotten is that people liked the sort of white paper call for sort of cadence versus having a discussion on community for like things that are going on now with the scheduler, that it's discussions kind of float away. It's hard to keep, hard to find later. And then if you start up a thread that's now six months old, right, which this might get kicked up multiple times, it's really hard to find it later on. So uh, whatever project wants to do, it's just feedback my collaboration's given me. And as far as the discussion is about commissioning, though, it shouldn't, my understanding is that it shouldn't be open to the world. It should be restricted to project and science collaborations. Am I correct? That's probably right, but um, it's probably right. worth um, NSAC, of course. I think it would be worth some some sort of statement, I guess, by the project of sort of where we stand and and what the process going forward is. As uh, Fed indicated, the uh, the community discussion would be would be the start of a process, and we're we're sort of trying to discuss how that whole process will go together and and what the end state will be. Um, community is not will will not be the final piece of that. Right, and it is fair Michael, to say. I'm sorry, Fed. Um, uh, Go ahead. This is Chuck. Um, so, regarding feedback as it relates to commissioning, right? We we've had several, admittedly failed attempts to get community feedback, and I think it was just premature. And so, my question is: is um, within the science collaborations and and um, ourselves are 
are we ready, are, are the science collaborations ready to provide that feedback now? Um, and what's the right timing? Um, I think um, that the, the, the mechanism that we used for the Cadence white paper is probably not a bad one to try, but um, I'm just, I'm asking the question is that if, if we're gonna start this process, I don't want it to fail again, that's all. Right, uh, so I think the, uh, for commissioning specifically, right? Yep. So right. for, for these so, issues about, about, about um, what, what um, Leanne brought I up. Have, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a her, lot of know, thoughts and concerns about the fact that we have this miscommunication in commissioning. I'm also receiving requests from people in the science collaborations to know where the commissioning stands and how they can contribute. So I think it's a gain on me and you to, to evaluate what is the best way to do this. But we need to organize, I think the liaisons for commissioning inside of the science collaboration are the right way to do it. But we need to organize them on a regular basis with conference calls and questions and answers uh, that go okay. in both directions from project and science collaborations and vice versa. And it's, it's on my to-do list to reach out to you exactly about this this week. So I can okay, stretch so, it from uh, my to-do list. I would I would yeah. recommend that we organize a conference call on a short time scale between the liaisons and the commissioning. Okay, that sounds good, Fed. And as you know, I'm 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 more than happy to communicate with you and the rest of the chairs on anything related to commissioning. Yep. So I have a question related to today's slides. Um, are can we share these with our working group leads or with our entire science collaborations? Sorry, I was muted. Um, I don't have a problem with that. Typically, we put the recorded versions of these PST site collaboration talks up on the website in any case, so you can see them. Um, there's nothing in here except for the proposed baseline, which is which is slides uh, 14 and 15. But these are these are any proposals that are up for discussion, and I don't think there's anything controversial on those. I certainly have no problem with that. Okay, and then there's a question about the notes as well. Um, maybe that question's for Fed. Um, if we can share the notes, I don't have any problems with the notes. Mostly, it's um, mostly I think it's Jalco and Leanne that had to approve it. I haven't read them yet because I've been talking. <laughs> but, right, um, and I notice also that I've been taking them, so they're going to be pretty bad. Everybody knows that. I'd actually, to, to be honest, I think the person I'd want to review this is, is also is Chuck to to see. Right. I don't want people to panic that suddenly commissioning is about to get cut in half. Right, so uh, I do have a... About commissioning. We're sort of speculating as to how we might uh, change this process to optimize alert production in year one, should there be any additional modifications to commissioning? I do have some concerns about that as well. So maybe the right way to do this is to hold on to this, to actually releasing the video. Um, Maybe the slides are okay, but we're actually releasing the video and the notes until we had a first call between the liaisons in commissioning and the commissioning team to just make sure that people feel like they now have a venue to discuss this and not that this is happening behind, yeah. you know, outside of their control. Exactly. So, so just to maybe um, add something to that to sum up, I mentioned at the beginning of the talk that there's a document, LSE 459, which is in preparation. This is meant to be an official project document where we clearly state what the baseline is for alert production in year one. So following this discussion, and that is I'm public, going to try and right? finish... Not yet, but it will be. Um, I'm going to finish a draft version of this circulated. It will have to go to the LSST Change Control Board and be approved by the project before it gets circulated publicly. But uh, as soon as I have the draft, which is based on what has been presented in this, uh, in this presentation and taking into account the feedback already received during this uh, past hour, and circulate that to the Science Advisory Committee and the Science Collaborations for review. Basically, we don't want to go to LCR and then have the Science Collaborations object to it afterwards. We want to involve you in this process beforehand and then put in a change request to the LSST board. So the document that is um, actually available is the document that Melissa wrote, uh, DNC yes. 107. That's right, the that technical assessment can of the shared. five options. You can take that document now, read it, assess it, give comments on it, um, start discussing with your liaisons to your science collaboration, or ask questions on the DM uh, SST Slack channel if you like. Okay. 
uh, as well. Um, we'd be very happy to take your input and feedback to that now. Um, but the official policy document is, is still in preparation. Okay. Okay. Does anyone have anything else? It's now 10 past 11. I, I do have to run. Thank I you, everybody, for joining left. the call. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.